Sorry, Mom, but my mom only cooked like two things, uh, meatloaf and lasagna. As a kid, like my mom was making lasagna and would like leave the plastic wrap on it as it baked in the oven. So meatloaf was always like the safe option. Hi, I'm Samantha Lamana. I'm the executive chef of Cozy Royale in East Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And today we'll be making meatloaf and twice baked potatoes. So we're gonna start with cutting our veg for the meatloaf. We're gonna do two small white onions. So I like to do like as small of a dice as possible just so that it cooks faster and a little bit more evenly. And then it can be like incorporated into the meatloaf better. Meatloaf is one of uh, America's oldest like traditions. It originated in 1870. I just looked this up last night, but um, it was one of my favorite meals growing up. And meatloaf and mashed potatoes was specifically one of our favorite things as kids. Also, like I kind of grew up on like the lower income side, so it was like you could eat off of it for like a week. I started cooking because I was originally an art major in college, <laughs> and I was a super jock. So I thought it was like a cool crossbreed between creativity and like a sport. <laughs> and then I never ever thought I'd go to New York, but here we are, uh, 10 years later. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this bell pepper. I feel like meatloaf is like not the prettiest name for anything, uh, cause it's like loaf, which is, <laughs> some people correlate it with not the most picturesque image in your brain, but it's so delicious and like makes your heart feel good and warm. I mean, it's like the iteration of pate, because pate is just a meatloaf really without, with some like bougie things in it. And I always season every step of my dishes because then it just makes the overall seasoning much easier. While these guys are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and just combine everything else in the bowl. Uh, this is just ground beef and we have some ground pork as well. You don't have to use pork in it. I just think that the pork adds like a nice fat flavor to it. And then we're gonna add some onion powder and some garlic powder, or you can use fresh garlic. We're gonna use some dry thyme. You could also use like oregano. And then we're gonna add our breadcrumbs. My mom used to literally just take white bread and throw it in there. I made a meatloaf the other day and did that, and I felt like it didn't hold as much. And then I'm gonna add my red tomato sauce. You can use ketchup or tomato paste, or like if you have marinara sitting around, you could do that. Veg is almost done. Well, my grandmother's recipe says no color at all, but if you want to caramelize your onions, like go for it. And I'm gonna go ahead and crack my eggs and beat those guys. And then I'm gonna pour my milk in. Also, like if you do things out of order, don't freak out, like it's fine. As long as you're emulsifying everything with your hands and the veg is cooled down properly, there's no structure or order to your meatloaf. All right, I'm gonna put my veg laid out on a little sheet tray just so it cools down quicker. Obviously, the more space and spread out it is, the faster it will go. And we cool this veg down so it doesn't cook your eggs or your meat or interfere with like the whole cooking process because you want everything cold. I don't know if meatloafs don't normally have cheese in it, but my family loves cheese, so we just use it, you know? It also like is kind of a binder. We're gonna use that as an excuse for it. But like cheese just makes things better, you know? This is like a really good like winter dinner as well. Like it's nice and homey go get stoned in your apartment and eat this is really great. <laughs> also, you can buy pre-shredded cheddar as well if you're on a time crunch. <laughs> or you could use whatever cheese you want. Pepper Jack would be cool, you know. Don't be too gentle with the salt. And then we're gonna go to crack some pepper in here. You can also put like red pepper flakes in it or cayenne, paprika, and then Worcestershire. I put a couple dashes in because I really like it. I think it adds a nice touch. And we're gonna use like half of this for the inside of the meatloaf and then we're gonna save the rest for the topping because that's like the most exciting part. I think our veg just cooled down enough. I'm gonna add all of it in. All right, and now this is where you get really hands-on. And you wanna make sure you mix this really nicely so that all the sections are equally seasoned and flavorful. So if you don't have one of these guys, it's totally fine. My mom would just like form it with her hands on a sheet tray and just might like lose its structure or touch. And there should be enough fat from the cheese and the pork and like the onions and the oil that you, you cooked it with. So you don't really need to spray anything or worry about it getting stuck. And then the fun part, we're gonna top it with the rest of the cheese. I love as much cheese as possible. <laughs> and then we're gonna put it in at 350 for like 45 minutes covered. 
He lives in the oven, so we're gonna start on our twice baked potatoes. And I'm gonna season these guys just to get the skins a little bit like nice and salted. I'm gonna bake them at 400 degrees for like an hour to hour, 15 minutes. It's been in for like 45 minutes, so we're gonna take the foil off now. It looks pretty melted. It's like starting to bubble with all the fat and grease, which is really awesome. And then we're gonna put it back in for probably like 30 minutes or so, but we'll check it um, at 15, because it's always good to just double check halfway through. So while our potatoes are baking, we're gonna go ahead and do garlic confit. The garlic confit is preserved garlic that has been slowly confit in oil. So we're gonna take two cups of oil to a cup of garlic. And you're gonna let this cook really low and slow because you want it to be like nice and golden. And if the if it's too high temp, it's gonna burn. We do this at the restaurant for like everything because <laughs> uh, I just love it. And it's just like a nice extra like oomph to food. I'm gonna go ahead and make breadcrumbs just to like top the baked potatoes. I'm gonna take probably half this bunch of parsley. You can really put how much ever you want in this breadcrumb mix. You can also use uh, dried parsley. You don't have to use fresh or you can use uh, the Italian breadcrumbs that already have seasoning in them. And I'm just gonna put it directly in our breadcrumb bowl. I prefer Italian breadcrumbs, but you can use panko, you can use, you can make your own breadcrumbs. But Italian breadcrumbs just add extra flavor because Italians add flavor to everything. Shout out to Italians. <laughs> I know I'm a ginger, but I am half Italian. <laughs> so we're gonna do the zest of these lemons and then not the juice, but you can save these lemons, don't throw them out, they're still good. We're gonna add chili flakes. If you want to buy pre-grated parm, that's totally fine. Um, I just like fresh grated. You could also use pecorino or whatever other cheese. Uh, it's been like an hour, so the potatoes are ready to come out. I'm gonna take my knife really quickly and just test them. It goes in super easy. So we're gonna let them cool just so I uh, don't burn my fingers trying to take all the innards out. I'm gonna start heating up my milk and butter. So this is like a lot of butter. <laughs> I think butter makes everything better, just like cheese makes everything better. Make sure that your milk and your butter is warmed up while your potatoes are still hot because you don't want them to like coagulate and then turn into cement or turn into like gumminess because that's just so disappointing and sad. So these have been resting for like five to 10 minutes. We're gonna scoop out the insides of these potatoes now. And when you're doing this, try to keep the base intact. And you wanna try to work as quickly as possible just so everything still is hot. I'm also gonna season these a touch now just to make sure everything gets a little love. The meat loaf has been in for like 20 minutes now, so we're gonna take it out. It looks like it's bubbling, so that's like a really good sign of doneness and the cheese is nice and golden. Uh, and then we're gonna let it just cool down so nobody burns the shit out of their mouth because that's what I would do. And then I'm gonna add some garlic confit to our buttermilk mixture. This is perfect, because as you see, I can just like touch it with my finger and push it down. It's very hot. <laughs> I'm actually gonna add a little bit more, but I love garlic. And we're gonna add it as we slowly use our hand mixer here. Now the thing about this is you don't wanna over whip potatoes. That also causes like a concrete style texture. You're definitely in salt. And then I'm gonna add our sour cream. I like love sour cream, so I use it in a lot of my cooking. My mom used to crack pepper in our potatoes all the time. This would be like a sin in a lot of kitchens, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And now we're just gonna try to fill them evenly as much as possible. When I was a kid, we used to go to my grandmother's house on the weekends, and we would eat the frozen version of this. It was like covered in bacon bits. These are probably a little more puree-esque than the ones we grew up as kids. I overfilled that one, it's okay. <laughs> and then we're going to breadcrumb our potatoes. And then we're gonna put these in the oven just until they're golden, and then they'll be ready to go. So our meatloaf is ready, um, and now we're gonna go pull our potatoes out of the oven. We're gonna finish this up with some chives that we cut earlier. I don't think you can have too many chives. That's just me. So everything is finished, so now we're gonna plate it and taste it, uh, which is the best part. I'm just gonna go for the cheese part. Oh, good. It's nice and fatty and cheesy. You can taste the thyme, which is cool. Let's try the potato. Oh, they're really good. If the potatoes are inside are creamy, the breadcrumbs add that nice crunch. As a kid, I would now squirt a side of ketchup. It's really good, but it's uh, not as good as my childhood. Mom, your best dish ever is meatloaf, so thank you for that. For the recipe, click the link below and come visit us at Cozy Royale in East Williamsburg.